Hello, my name is Podcast Arcade, and I want to share with you how I make these videos. I've been a programmer for a very long time, and I'm also an artist, so I wanted to see if I could combine my skills and make a YouTube channel. I was thinking of doing something with podcast audio because there's just a limitless supply, and uh, if I can make something that uses it, then I can make a ton of videos with all that podcast audio. I remembered Teddy Ruxpin because I had one as a little kid and it's a, this little robot bear and you put cassette tapes in his back and his uh, mouth moves with the audio. And I figured that was a cool little thing. And even more so, uh, my older brother put Eddie Murphy raw into Teddy Ruxpin. And well, how come you keep fucking with me then, huh? What's all the motherfucking jokes? You don't like my clothes? What, what's your motherfucking pop? You know that and uh, it was hilarious. If I can make something like that work and then just throw in some backgrounds, I can make a channel and I could just put out a bunch of videos. I was trying to think about what kind of backgrounds I could make to keep things interesting and I uh, just figured, you know, video game footage. Once again, limitless supply. You know, I remembered a lot of games from my childhood, so I figured if I could find the ROMs and uh, have the emulators for that stuff, I could just record myself playing video games and then um, put some talking heads over it and call it a thing. I felt like I had a solid plan, so I spent about four months programming and came out with a system that allowed me to do exactly that with talking mouths and, uh, and backgrounds. I'm not going to go deep into the super nerd stuff of uh, how I programmed it. I'm just going to show you what I did program and... Uh, give you an idea of how these videos come together and how I've made the process easy on myself. First, I'll just run through all the software I use. Um, I use Windows. I use OBS to record all the video. I use a free program called Ocean Audio to do quick audio edits. Uh, I use Reaper to do more in-depth audio editing, and I, that runs my uh, Waves plugins for mastering and all that fun stuff. I use Unity to run the animation and run the experience. I program in C Sharp, I use Visual Studio. My video utilities are all using FFmpeg. I use a free program called paint.net, which is an audio, uh, which is an image editor. I use a program called Fusion for Sega emulation. I use MAME for arcade emulation. And I use SNES 9X for a Nintendo emulation. All right, so let's jump into it. So the first thing I do is I trim the comedy bit. This program is really bare bones. That's why it's free. It doesn't run any of my Waves plugins. It crashes on a lot of my VST plugins. So it's just good for really basic edits. The only hard part about this is deciding where to start and stop the bit. It's time consuming just because I have to listen to a lot of it and really think and pay attention. Once I have the audio trimmed, I'll bring it into Reaper for a quick mastering pass. And this isn't the kind of mastering that I would do for music. It's just squashing the sound so the levels are even. In Come Town, the three guys are talking and their voices are at wildly different volumes. Stav's laugh comes in really harsh sometimes. <laughs> I try to soften that up and just make the whole thing loud so it sounds good through a cell phone speaker. So as you see, I have a mastering chain already set up. Uh, the first part is EQ. Uh, I just use this for filtering. I roll off the highest highs and the lowest lows. So I and I also use it as a boost for like gain staging. Sort of like Next up is the oh, multiband compressor. Yeah. That just uh, keeps the sound from going too wild. I actually have pretty gentle settings uh, for this one. Then I use this tape emulation for saturation, which is just a fancy word for distortion. Uh, I add a real subtle amount of distortion, and it tends to soften up some of the spikes and keeps things from being too uh, harsh. Then we get into uh, this hard limiter, called Loud Max. It's a free plugin. 
This is actually really aggressive. The uh, settings I have it on, I'm really squashing the sound with this. I wouldn't do this for music, but since it's all voice and it's just come town talking, you know, I just squash it so I get the the loudness that I want. After that is one more EQ. It's the same EQ plugin. It's just at the end of the uh, signal chain. So this is my last chance to uh, soften anything up or, you know, address any issues that have come up during the mastering process. And once again, uh, why do I do this? It's just to even out the sound. Uh, we can see here in the waveform where there's areas that used to get way louder and now they're squashed down and the quieter parts are louder. Now that I have the audio trimmed and loud, I use a program to mark the audio where people are talking. So in my videos, the mouth animations are all based on the audio waveform. Someone's mouth is open for exactly as much as you see these spikes. It'd be cool to do a reality show where it's like, I'm going to Alaska, I'm going to survive for a week on my own. So for Come Town, for instance, uh, there's three people talking, which means I have to go through and mark up in time who is talking when. So I wrote this program to help me do that. Other audio editing programs have this feature, like Reaper or Adobe Audition, and I actually did the first few episodes using those programs. But after several episodes, I decided I could make something that would make the process go faster. So this is what I made. I'm showing you this because this is actually the most tedious and time-consuming part in making these videos. I just go through like this and select a region and press the button for the character that's talking. Yeah. You jack off to yeah. it. Yeah. 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 You jack off to it. Yeah. There he are is. a lot of places where to everyone yeah. is, is talking yeah. at the he same is. time. So that makes it uh, a little bit challenging to go through and See right here, both Adam he and Stoff are fast. talking at the same time. I try to get in there and <laughs> isolate the areas as best as I can. <laughs> so doing this um, is usually mentally exhausting. It's a real chore. Like I can't listen to music while I'm doing it. I have to sit and just focus and listen to tiny, tiny bits of audio over and over. So after 30 or 40 minutes of doing this, I have to just get up and walk away from my computer. But usually one episode worth of audio is takes about 30 or 40 minutes. And when I'm all done, this is what it looks like. Four or five minute come town bit will take somewhere between 200 and 300 markers. So the cool thing is, is once I've done this, all the mouth animation is taken care of. I don't have to do anything else. Uh, the system that I programmed to do the mouth animation just uses these markers and the waveform and takes care of itself. Next up is making faces. I already have faces, obviously, for Nick, Stav, and Adam, so I could just reuse those, you know, every episode. But uh, for Nick's impressions... And to make the videos more interesting, uh, I'll try to do faces for the impressions that Nick does. Usually, I'll just uh, go on Google Images and search for a face that looks good enough, and then bring that into Paint.net to start editing. So I have Jamie Kilstein's face right here. Uh, first thing I'll do is erase the background. Now I have a cutout head, looks good enough. Next, I'll make a rectangle that goes around the bottom lip and jaw. I'll copy that to a new layer and erase anything above the bottom lip. Then I go back to the base image and I'll select the darkest color in the image and I use that as the open mouth color. I fill it all in just like that. Now I put the bottom jaw back. I move it around to make sure it looks good. And now I just save the bottom jaw and the face as two separate images. Easy as that. So I'll just do that for all the faces that I need. 
Um, it goes really quick. It's really easy. Usually doesn't take more than five or ten minutes. So now I have the audio ready to go. I have these faces ready to go. Next thing I have to do is these backgrounds. So I get the video game footage from emulators and other places. I use a program that I wrote within Unity to mark where the character's heads are supposed to be. The way I track heads is really simple. Um, basically, I just play the video back at 10% speed and I'll hover my mouse over where I want the head to be and my software is recording my mouse positions as the video is playing and that essentially just records a a set of data of where the head's supposed to be for every frame of video. I have to really pay attention, uh, but it's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. And I can listen to music while I'm doing this, and it usually goes pretty fast. The results aren't perfect, but I'm cool with that. Um, I actually like the human touch that it gives it. You know, when you're watching these heads move around in the videos, that's actually my hand moving the mouse around. So it has kind of an organic feel to it. For this particular video, I'm recording positions for the very top of the head and the very bottom of the head. Um, and this actually gives more accurate tracking and allows the heads to rotate and scale based on how the heads are moving around. In a lot of the videos, I'm only recording one position per head, so the heads don't scale. If you watch my old uh, video of uh, nursing homes, it's over 3D characters that are moving around and the perspective is changing, and you notice the heads aren't changing. And it's because there's only one position that I'm recording per head, so there's not enough data to scale the heads appropriately. Preparing the background videos like this takes anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes per video. Uh, if there's a lot of movement or it's real crazy, then it takes longer. Um, I did a video that uses Day of the Tentacle, the James Bond video, and uh, since everyone's mostly standing still, that one went way faster. It took me maybe 10 minutes to do the whole video. So now it comes down to the final process, which is uh, now that I have the audio ready to go and the faces are ready to go and the video game background uh, footage is ready to go, I just have to put it all together. This all relies heavily on code that I wrote and systems that I built to uh, run this whole thing. Um, even though it's all within Unity, if you downloaded a copy of Unity for yourself, you know, you wouldn't see, you know, these things that that I have in here. I set up whatever talking heads weren't already there. In this case, the Jamie Kilstein one. I plug in the audio files and references that I set up. And just like that, stuff starts working. I'll basically just watch the video over and over and look for things that need to be fixed or changed. I don't always remember every step in my own process, so by watching the video over and over, I'll eventually be reminded of the things I need to do. I usually stretch the video game background to fit the whole screen. I made this zooming system that allows me to zoom in on a face based on what button I push and the software handles all the rest. And for each episode, it needs to be tweaked a little bit or you know, the, the settings need to be adjusted to work best with whatever video I'm working on. The thumbnail that you see on YouTube, that actually gets generated within this app as well. I press a button and it takes a snapshot and it puts up the title banner, puts the title on top of it and make sure that everyone's mouth is open. Yeah, if you go back and look at all of my thumbnails, everyone's mouth is always open. The high score screen at the end, 
just adds up all the time that everyone's been talking and ranks the people based on that. These side heads that pop in and out, that's a system I wrote, and it basically just pops the character in and out um, if they're talking. Once they stop talking, it waits a few seconds, and if they haven't started talking again, it animates them off the screen. And this is actually really helpful because a lot of the video game footage I have doesn't have three consistent characters. So with this, I can freely choose video games with just one player, and I always have this as my easy answer for what the other heads are going to do. Once I have that all done, um, I build the Unity app as a, to a standalone application, and I'll run it full screen, and I record it with OBS, and that's what you see on YouTube. That's what I upload to YouTube. No video editing in between or anything. So now that I have this system up and running uh, and it works, what's next? Well, I'll keep programming on things I made just to refine the tools and see if I can't make things a little bit faster, a little bit easier on myself. I'll see how monetization goes for this channel. Uh, it might or might not prove to be worth it. I am happy to see that I met the minimum requirements in under six months. 99% uh, of that has to be due to the popularity of Cumtown. Uh, maybe after a year, I'll look at this and it'll either be something worth continuing or not. Um, if not, no big deal. I could just start some other project. Maybe I'll do some other podcasts. Uh, I tried a few Tim Dillon episodes <clears throat> and those barely got any views. Maybe I could do some murder podcasts for girls and do a separate channel that is branded like super feminine. Uh, instead of video games as background, I could do like Hello Kitty or a tampon commercial. I don't know. It seems that no one is going to get a copyright claim for Cometown content, uh, but maybe more popular mainstream podcasts would take issue with a clip channel. So, yeah, um, we'll see how that goes. And just generally speaking, uh, it seems like being a YouTuber is a lot of work uh, for a job where an automated system can simply choose not to pay you uh, for any reason. So... That's why I need to be careful, a little more guarded about how much time and effort I sink into this. Uh, so that's the end of the presentation. Thanks for watching. Bye.